And finally, we are going to put everything together in this video and complete the proof of the local de Marbrat plus central limit theorem. So we are in the process of proving the Marvla plus CRT again, and we started to calculate the mass function for k is not very far from n p, and we did some calculations and concluded that it can be written as the product as this factor in front as the product of something we call term one and term two. In both terms, we have one minus small or one plus small to some powers, and we have some error as well and we calculated term 1, which ended up as this exponential and error, and now it's time to do term 2. Now, for term 1, we did a series expansion of logarithm. For term 2, life is simpler. The reason, the reason it's simpler is that we only have a one-half power here, so we don't need to deal with changing powers. It's just a fixed constant one-half power. So life is actually much simpler. To do that, what we see is something in the form of 1 plus x to the 1 half. Notice that in term 2, we see 1 plus x to the 1 half, or 1 minus x to the 1 half. k minus np over nq or k minus np over np are still small. It's the same terms as here. So these are still small people. And so 1 plus square root of x is in the first approximation is of course one. When x is small, it's one, but then there is an error term and I no, don't need actually for term two to do anything fancy. I'm just going to say that there is a linear error. So it's big O of x. There is a linear error. And also notice that the stuff we have, the, the small stuff we have is still in the order of a n over root n. So x will be in the order of a n over root n. And therefore, to, for term 2, the only thing I need to say is that from ter for term 2, we have a 1 plus big O of a n over root n. Okay? So this is true for both of these terms separately. Uh, maybe I can... Maybe I can show you how we get how we get out of this how we get out of this just this error overall. Now there are already there is already a thing here. It should be under the in the denominator under the reciprocal, but one over one plus small is the same as one plus small. Okay, so one over one plus big O of a and over root n is the same as without the 1 over, it's just 1 plus big O of a n over root n, and then this multiplied together with this other one. Uh, homework, verify that, so verify that 1 over 1 plus big O of x is the same as 1 plus big O of x, where big O is of course not a fixed uh, function, it's just something in the order of x. Okay, so check this. It's essentially the 1 over 1 plus small function has a bounded derivative. And now if I multiply terms together, then I have a 1, when I multiply the 1 by the 1, and then I have twice, well not twice because these are not exactly the same terms, but I have a big O of a n over root n, and I have another big O of a n over root n, but if I add two errors of that order of magnitude together, it's still in that order. And then I have a big O of a n square over n, so the square of a n over root n. However, <coughs> if you look at the beginning, of the, the statement of the theorem, we assume that a n, um, we assume that a n is smaller than n to the one six. So a n over root n is smaller than n to the one six over n to the one half. So that's really small. The square of it is much smaller. So the square of a n over root 10 is much smaller than a n over root 10. So this term, this error term is smaller than that one. It can be collapsed into there. And this is just really the, the leading error is a n over root 10. So this is term two. And so now we have to combine everything together and that will conclude the proof. So the mass function of k is equal to, according to the calculations before, 
1 over square root of 2 pi half mpq, 1 over square root of 2 pi hat mpq times term 1 times term 2. Okay, and times an error, 1 plus big O of 1 over m. This was the conclusion we made earlier on. Now term 1 is from another part of this proof. So term 1 is here. Term 1 is uh, this exponential times an error, so I'm going to copy that there. e to the minus k minus mp square over 2 mpq times 1 plus big O of a m cube over root n. This is term 1. Term 2, we just concluded that term 2 was uh, right here. Term 2 was 1 plus big O of a n over root n. And then we also had this other error term, 1 plus big O of 1 over n. Okay, so these are the, the errors we have. And now the only thing we need to check is which is the leading error and what kind of error terms come together here. Now, a n cube over root n goes to 0 because the assumption was that a n over n to the 1 6 goes to 0 or cube that a n cube over root n goes to 0. Okay, so this thing goes to 0, so this is small. a n over root n is also small and actually it's much smaller because a n uh, is smaller than n to the 1 6. a n over n to the 1 6 went to 0. So this thing is smaller than n to the 1 6 over root n, which is really small. Okay, it's a uh, it's, it's small. A n can go up to a n can go up to n to the one six, so it's a non-decreasing sequence, and so this term is definitely larger than that term. The denominator is the same, but this is cubed, and n is non-decreasing. It can grow up to smaller than n to the one six, so this term is definitely larger than that term, and then this one is even smaller than all of those two because here it's. Uh, something over root n, something non-decreasing over root n, and this is 1 over n, so this is much smaller. So the leading error term is this guy here. This guy is the leading error. That's the largest of these three terms. So we are definitely going to have that guy. So 1 over root 2 pi hat npq e to the minus k minus np square over 2 npq and we are definitely having 1 plus big O of a n cube over root n and then what else do we have? We have these people which are smaller so when you multiply ones together that's when we have the one when we multiply this error term with the other two ones that's when we have this one when we multiply one here, one there, and this error, then we have this guy here, but that's smaller than the leading error term. So that's collapsed into here. When we multiply one and one and this error term there, that's even smaller than the previous ones. So that's again collapsed to here. And then we have further terms when we multiply two or three of these big O's together. And again, that's each of those will be smaller than this guy here. So it's enough to look at the leading error in this product. Anything else we do with multiplying terms together is going to be smaller than or equal to this order. And therefore, that's the, that's the leading order we need. Okay. And now we are actually done because, because phi, what is phi? What is phi of k minus np over square root npq. What is that? It's 1 over root 2 pi and then exponential of minus the square of that over 2. k minus np square
square over root n phi q times 2. And if we look carefully, then we actually recognize part of this, like this part and that part is together this except one thing except that this is pi and this is a constant we still don't know okay but other than that we have those terms and what did we want to prove this is what we wanted to prove we wanted to prove that the mass function the mass function over phi so the mass function over phi times square root of mpq times square root of mpq is close to 1. How close? Well, it's uh, close to 1. How close? Well, this close, big O of a n cube over root n. So if you look carefully what we get, what we got to, then except for the constant pi and pi had being equal, we actually proved them are Laplace. Okay, so that's the end of the proof, except I still didn't tell you why pi is equal to pi hat. But that's coming in the next video.